All right, let's get turned around here to kick this thing off. Reset. All right, as you guys can see, we've got our famous gauntless All right, here we go. As you can see on the screen, my friends, you are back in the gauntlet. So no, I don't have a new update. This is still 69.25.1. However, the last one was a bit of a mess. And this time, we get the rare privilege of some wet weather testing. Now, it was pouring down rain a couple of minutes before I started this. So we'll see how this goes. With the magic of editing, I should be able to compile three good laps for y'all so we can examine this again on the gauntlet with fresh eyes. Now, as per request, I have removed the always rainbow road as well as moved the blind spot camera up and over the navigation so we should have an unimpeded view of the actual path planning, the decision making, the intentacle. Let's see how we do with this obstacle in front of us here. You should handle this beautifully. We do have another vehicle coming down the road too. Let's see, that intentacle is lining up just right. All right, so we're gonna judge all these corners. I'm gonna use my little suggest subjective, sub yes, subjective tactic, sorry, words, early in the morning. It is 0942, Tuesday morning. So I wanna see the initiative taken here. Now we're getting the barrier there. We're coming in hard to the right. Now we are not clear. We did somebody right on our rear end. I can't tell what they're planning to do. I don't want to have to give it throttle if I don't have to, but we're not showing any sign of inch inching forward here. There we go. Come on. You need to go. You need to go. You need to go. Yeah, this guy that was right up behind us was going the same direction. All right, now let's see how we flow through here. We don't want to see it stop or any type of four-way treatment here. We just need to push through. I got to give it throttle. Goodness, that's not good. All right, we're coming in here a bit hot, but that was some good finesse, good control. I'll have to watch back and see why exactly we paused there so long. Now, hopefully we get on to the 163 with no issues, no crazy humans preventing us from doing it. There we go. Very good execution. So this time around, there is something else I'm gonna do a little differently as suggested by at least two other viewers for the 80 split. If it starts to try to change lanes, I'm gonna see if I can just cancel it with the turnstock and prevent a disengagement. And the, the sole reason that I actually wanna do this now is that I wanna see if not disengaging helps the system as it is go through hotel circle at proper speed and not do its typical acceleration at about 10 meters out that forces me to take over. Uh, the 80 split and hotel circle seem to be getting more and more consistently failed than succeeded, which is frustrating, but we'll see how this goes. I gotta kinda be quick here, cause you know, wet roads, lots of morning traffic. We're gonna see if I can just cancel it with the turnstock. Uh, if not, I'll just, you know, force it to stay in this lane. And we're slowing down a lot, there we go. All right, all right, all right, all right. Nope, yep, it's uh, it starts turning in before the turn signaling even becomes a concern. So, yeah, I don't think that's gonna be possible. I don't know, I'll give it a shot for the other two laps as well, but let's see. Right about now, we'd accelerate right on cue, but we're decelerating really well. Hello. And that was with me having to disengage and re-engage. So, there's a question to be asked about interrupting the system and how it responds. Now, I know I got one Fantastic viewer that I've learned a lot from uh, that I had the privilege of listening to on a Tesla space held by uh, Yaman yesterday. Uh, Wes, if you're watching, which I'm sure you are, I know you like these gauntlet videos and you're very analytical. I want you to pick this apart, my friend. I want to know everything you have to say about all of this, um, as well as uh, everybody's opinion on doing the dark display, the nighttime mode. I think that contrast allows us to see the blue a little bit better on the intensical, kind of being able to tell what the vehicle's planning and doing. All right, now we're getting into our hairpin. Now let's see how we come through here. I know that Wes has talked about uh, this, this hairpin in particular, and I don't wanna butcher what he said. I pinned his comment in the last gauntlet video, so go check it out. There's a lot of really good information there. But that basically it's planning in real time here, and it doesn't know 
like we do, that these lanes are, are separate. Um, so it's, especially if there's another car involved, takes an extra time to process its plan to make sure that there's no object in the way. Um, I hope that I said that correctly. That was actually really good. I, I would give that a B plus or an A. Um, we flowed through really well and then stopped only for a brief second, which that, that's fine. I don't really see a reason to dock the system for that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to do about this. I know we're going to get over very late, about three seconds, two, one. Now we are pretty much like on the solid white line. And we're staying in the far right lane, which is good. We got a little twitch there. I know there's been some behavior in the past that makes it want to shift into that far left lane. I think the system's getting better with its deliberate lane decision making to stay in the right lane given the upcoming turns and such. I've noticed, you know, the leaving the stop signs without lingering so much and better lane selection for future path planning on a route, those two things have gotten a lot better. And I do feel like that needs a lot of praise. Let's see how we behave with a car racing up and a big bus next to us. Finesse is amazing. Like this, this feels really, really good. So contrary to lap one from last time, that was really entertaining. This was actually a really smooth lap. Uh, thinking back on it, the, the initiative out of that right turn, um, if you haven't yet, I would I would search for one of my I'll put it in the link I'll, I'll put a link in the description to my comparison video that showed 10.5 and 10.6 and how quickly it got moving on that initial right turn before the 163 left turn. And it's a small thing to pick apart, but the amount of time that we sat there with the opportunity is frustrating and the individual behind us was so impatient that they came up like literally next to us like they were going to make a left, but they were still going to make a right. So I know, I know. Just a little, hey, you're there, right? So I'm actually, I'm gonna take over. There's no one behind me. I'm gonna carry on straight to get on to the next lap. Okay, that's not flooded. I was a little worried because that's the road that the San Diego River floods during these crazy raining seasons. But let's zip to lap two and we'll continue our discussion. All right, beautiful. We are rolling into lap two, everybody. Uh, now I am noticing that the rain is starting to pick up a little bit. Actually, now it seems like it might've chilled a little bit. For a second there, we got a little spurt of a shower that I was worried we may lose FSD on, but so far, so good. As long as I don't have to disengage, we should be okay. Now, this is light enough that there shouldn't really be an issue, but it could pick up at any minute. Um, now, to, to bug you again, Wes, if you're watching, I have had viewers in the past comment on this left turn up here and whether or not the gate is open, affecting the behavioral... Um, affecting the behavior of the system as it goes through that turn. I can't really say definitively that I can go one way or the other on that. Here we have another example of being totally open. <laughs> Ten years later, this van finally catches up. We're not moving. Uh, we're totally clear after this Honda. But yes, this... Uh... No, we're not. Mini Cooper. Oh, man. See, this is a problem. We should have gone. I'm going to give it throttle because we're never going to move. All right. So this gate up here to the left, it's closed right now. Um, we're coming into a stop here. This guy's on my bumper, man, you. And she's flipping me off, jeez. Oh no, it's open now, all right. And we actually went through a bit smoother. <laughs> now I can't remember if lap one was open or closed. I've got too much going on in my head, but we'll be able to see it in the video at least. Um, that was handled a bit better, but I noticed that we had the indication on the blue line on the tentacle or whatever that shows it fading out as you're coming to a stop. So it seems to still be treating that spot as a, a stopping scenario. I didn't see the barrier, the, you know, the, the visual representation of a line that's creeping up to, and I haven't seen any words of checking for visibility like we have on previous patches before 25, but the execution around that left turn down to the 163 on-ramp is still really wonky. Now I'm going to try again here to see if the indicator can do anything at all. I am going to hypothesize no, just given the experience with lap one. We start turning into 8 east before the turn signals really even got any power or any say in the matter. But let's see what happens speed wise. We did have about a two to three kilometer acceleration going into hotel circle, but it corrected itself today, which is interesting. All right, here we go, here we go. Nope, 
Still didn't work. All right, I am re-engaging. That split's just a monster. Coming in here a little fast. Now we're decelerating. And then this is where, right here, we accelerate. Right on the money. But we're, we're slowing down. A little bit hotter than the last time, but it, it's got it. There we go. We've got, you know, probably about a meter, half a meter to the line when we were coming in. So like that was, that was pretty good. That was good control. Clear behind us. So it's recognizing Hotel Circle better this time around. I don't know if the refractive nature of the water on the road has anything to do with it. Okay, well, something weird just happened. Guess what, guys? We got our map glitch. Ha! <laughs> so this is gonna excessively take us down past the hairpin. Maybe Muse is fed up. He's like, that stupid hairpin, you keep yelling at me for it, so I'm just gonna go all the way down. Joke's on him. We're gonna hit another hairpin. All right, here we go, for science. Let's see how we handle this next hairpin maneuver coming up on another hotel circle. Jeez, I know it's slowing down because of the merge lane with this vehicle coming up, but that was rather uncomfortable. Well, looking back on this lap, pretty well. I, I mean, I don't want to give it too much praise compared to the standard that I would have for the system at its current level. The lack of initiative to get moving on that initial right turn is really frustrating. Uh, again, check out 10.5 and 10.6. I think even 10.8, it got moving there beautifully, just about every time. Now, neither of the, none of those builds could really do the 163 merge to save his life. It was impossible back then, but at least it got that right turn down. <laughs> All right, now we're coming into our exit here to shift back to FSD beta and to come into a bit of an elongated hairpin style maneuver. Let's see how we flow into this. Whoa. All right, we're a little jolty on the brakes. It's kind of a fresh territory here. See, this I handled, that was, man, that was awesome. That was really good. No conflicting uh, language or, or internal commands, I suppose, you know, having stop signs next to you and such to do anything differently. So it flowed through there beautifully. And this is just gonna make us kind of flow all the way down. I guess this will be another rare chance to see that this lane that we're in is separate from the hairpin lane that we should flow into. But I, I don't know what causes this weird map glitch. This is not the FSD beta's fault. This is something to do with the map system. Every now and then it'll do this. At least it didn't do what it does sometimes, which is expects where that hairpin is for me to start the hairpin and then you turn back onto the highway to then do what we just did. Sometimes it does that. And at that point I gotta take over because that's not only illegal, but an impossible maneuver for the system right now frustrating it's I don't know maybe a testament to the system that the things that are frustrating me are becoming more and more external to it that it's not necessarily the limitations of FSD beta but bad mapping or path planning because of a route that's not to say the system's ready or perfect but I do like where we're going so here's our hairpin, the one that we should go through, and we can see the BMW is flowing through. This Ford should flow on through. We need to get on moving. This guy inched up too far, which sort of spooked the car a bit, but that was still really good. See, we left that stop sign with some haste, and we got over just in time to dodge that pothole. Oh, I almost had to take over there. <laughs> we need pothole defense. Okay, this uh, Ford's swaying a little bit there. That was a little nerve-wracking. All right, now we're finishing up. We're gonna, I know we're gonna come in late here. We don't really have anybody behind us. We'll see if we stay in one lane or we get a little sloppy. But lap two overall wasn't too bad. Not too much different than lap one. That was a very determined lane shift there. I really wanna know what's going on with uh, the left turn onto the 163 and the initial right turn. Cause the stuff on the 80s split and hotel circle, those are arguably just, wow, nope, that's not right. It's trying to cut over mid lane, I guess. Maybe, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Was that because of the BMW? It was using it as a lead car? I've not had that issue in a while. I've seen plenty of humans do that, but 
I hold Mew to a higher standard. Anyway, uh, as I was saying, 80 split and Hotel Circle, those are highway related. I still like to see what happens there because though I have said over and over that version 11 will be the version that beats the gauntlet, I don't think it will at first. I think this course is going to prove to be a pain in the rear, even to version 11. I don't know what's going on with that 80 split. I know that James Damas talked a bit about the logic of the system around splits or the way it behaves with splits and that it's a lot more complicated than we think. But yeah, I'm curious to see what will happen because we are closing in on version 11. There's a lot of talk about 11.3, so we'll see. We'll see. I will catch you guys for lap three. Okay, as you're looking at it right now, so everyone sees, there's our initial hairpin. This is the proper course. Hopefully we don't get the freaky glitch. We'll go ahead and activate here at the stop. Going into our right turn, we are on lap three. It just got done raining again. I did not have access to the FSD beta until about you know, 30 seconds before I turned the cameras back on. It was coming down pretty good on the highway all the way back up. There's like a pocket of rain that keeps hitting me on the return trip. So fortunately it hasn't stopped us from using the FSD beta, but it is staying freshly wet and occluded outside. So we'll see how this right turn and left turn go again. I think what I may do, uh, not in the same video because it would just be way too long, but I might do some extra testing and clip that into a separate video that'll be like extra gauntlet tests or something. I don't know, something more clever than that. All right, cool. We didn't freak out with that car because he stopped. But I want to do a lot more consistent testing on this specific issue with not pulling out with any initiative whatsoever. We sit back here, we come forward. This is BMW behind me. Fortunately, he's turning left, so he might not actually honk at me. See, we're totally clear, and we're, look at this, we're crawling so bad. All right, now we are getting the notification that we're going to stop here, which, yep, full stop. No one behind us creeping forward checking for visibility there it is confirmation it is still treating this as a four-way stop which that is not accurate that is not correct so awesome all right now let's see we got 163 but we got a chevy right up here oh but he's getting over thank you for being a good human is it enough is it enough yes you're awesome thank you man all right props to this human for being diligent that was good so we managed to get over now we're gonna go into the 80s split I'm not even gonna bother to try to stop it with the turnstock clearly that does not work now do we oh it happened it happened on our way we we lost our route somehow I wonder if I can fix that without completely ruining this test so back to the supercharger there we go. We're holding to that route. Let's see here. Going to navigation. Yeah, everything should be fine. We're still holding the route. It's proper. We're slowing down pretty far back this time. But we're maintaining speed around 80k, which is good. Oh, I had to say that. Now we're slowing down excessively again. I don't want to input throttle here and throw the system off, so... Uh, there we go. Okay, so I really want to see what it was different there. Why? Why did it do that? It slowed down earlier. So, okay, things to notice. Actually, first, let's get through this. Accelerating as expected. Control deceleration. Likely get the red hand beep. No. No, it's just completely owning this corner. That is three successful hotel circles in this gauntlet. One successful 80 split. Very curious. Now, important conversation about this 80 split. What I noticed, and I encourage everyone to go back and watch and analyze the hell out of this, I noticed that we started to decelerate a lot earlier than normal toward those caution ramps and everything. Now, I'm very careful through there not to give throttle. I, once or twice, if we've gone really slow, I have, but there is definitely like an input latency issue with intervening with the throttle that causes some issues in the decisions it makes following immediately after so I try not to get involved which is why I thought if it succeeded through 80 split that it would always nail hotel circle but that's also not been the case however 
All right, hang on. Actually, let's analyze this this hairpin here. Slowing down a bit early. Yep, nope. That's already a, a C tier. And now it's a D. Why? We did so good on the 80s split. We're like completely at a stop there. We're just kind of stuttering a little bit. All right. Yeah, that's definitely a D tier move. I didn't have to take over, so I'm not going to give it an F. But compared to the previous runs. Um, also, good note that all three times, no speed limit issue. That's been accurate. Now again, back to the 80s split. We slowed down earlier than normal. And then I thought we were fine, and we slowed down some more. And then it it felt like it hung left a little bit rather than initially going to the right. Wow, we just... It used, like, all of its energy on the 80s split, and we have totally ruined the rest of this. We just bombed that double lane left. <laughs> That's why I love the gauntlet, guys. All right. Yeah, that's that's uh, two fails in a row on our final left turn. Um, I consider that a fail because we like we stopped diagonally in both lanes, which is really sloppy. Ah, takes away from the pizzazz of the 80s split success. Um, I don't know enough about this to really understand what happened there, but it seemed like the system had more time to analyze the situation. If I'm just spitballing as a layperson, it slowed down sooner, was a bit more to the left, and it didn't have the initial inkling to dive in. It just kind of stayed there. And we saw some turn signal action. I don't know if it was left or right. I'm going to have to check. I'm going to take over and kind of start driving myself towards home. That way I can uh, start getting these videos uploaded. Um, actually, no, I'm going to do some more filming and, and some further experimentation that will follow in a second video. The first time I've really done this because I I want to do some more testing. I'm not satisfied with three laps, but for the sake of video length, this is already my longest type of video. That's why I've never really done more than three laps. Okay, there's been some bonus laps on, on really crazy days. Anyway, I'm ranting. Uh, give me all your thoughts and feedback down below. I look forward to what Wes has to say and anyone else who's got expertise in the fields of neural nets, machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, path planning, heuristics. Like I am such a geek for this stuff and I know a lot about a lot of science, but this is some deep stuff that I am still trying to wrap my head around. It reminds me of reading books about quantum physics, like Quantum Man by Lawrence Krauss, which is really good about Dick Feynman and yeah, the quantum world. It, it's what honestly this reminds me of. Um, but I, I thank you again for all the support and, and hanging in for these longer, more analytical views or, uh, videos. They're not quite as maybe entertaining to some as the customer reaction stuff, but that's going to be kind of the, the black and white of my channel a bit, you know, the customer fun interaction, random adventure type stuff with like unguided adventures. And then the very analytical, like challenge course, like what is happening behind the scenes. Let's treat the gauntlet like we did Chuck Cook's left turn. I'm going to cut it there. Thank you guys for the view. I will catch you all in the next video. Take care.